questions about tools and so today I, I want to answer a lot of the questions about tools and also um, we're going to give you an idea where to buy these tools. There's very few places that offer these specialized tools. You got to find a lot of placements for these tools, a lot of substitutes. Don't go for it. I, I know the best tools possible. So I'm going to review those today in this tutorial and I hope that um, you'll email me to, to further to find out where you can get these tools. Um, I, I have my own supplier um, that would be more than happy to help you. So the first uh, tool that we're going to look at is the magnetic tack hammer. This is an old traditional tool that is very much needed today. Um, some of my uh, YouTube videos show how to uh, use tacks and um, this is a tack hammer and it's basically it's two parts. It's a hammer and it's a magnetic mag magnet. The magnet in the old days was used to spit tacks with and you've seen, I have a video about spitting tacks you might want to check out. Um, I would not advise you to spit tacks today, but the hammer itself is really good um, uh, hammering the, the you know, pin tacks in. You can still use the magnetic hammer to pick up one tack at a time from a table and then pin tack and you'll see that in some of the other videos. Um, it's got the right weight to it. It's a perfect upholsterous tool. I don't know anybody else that uses this tool except upholsterers. And again, this is a bronze. This is a very specialized tool. Um, so that's that's very essential. So we'll put that aside for now. And of course, a good pair of scissors. Um, I, this is a six inch pair of scissors. They come eight and they come ten. I believe they come twelve. But a, a good pair of scissors um, is essential too, obviously. And if you're going to be doing upholstery, you might want to invest in a scissor sharpener or a scissor sharpening service. Um, but a good pair of scissors obviously is essential. Um, a mallet. A wooden mallet specifically. People say, can I use a, a, a you know, rubber mallet? No. A rubber mallet will leave stains in, in the fabric. So always go with your wooden mallet because sometimes you're hitting fabric with the wooden mallet to get it to, to work for you. Um, the, big, uh, the, the bigger reason that you have a, a mallet, a wooden mallet, is it has a large surface area. It's lightweight, uh, much lighter than a, a metal mallet or a, a rubber mallet. Um, perfect for upholstery because when you're using it with a chisel, uh, it's large surface area. You're not, your focus is not up in here where you're hammering, but down where you're, where you're trying to pull tacks or staples. So it's important um, that you know that if you do miss and you're just doing tapping motions, you're not going to hurt yourself too much. Okay, so that's very, very important. Uh, a clean wooden mallet is important. Put that aside. People ask about webbing stretches all the time. In one of my videos, the You Cover Upholstery Stool Kit, How to Upholster Your Own uh, Footstool, um, that was one of our first videos. We show how to stretch webbing with home tools, so this is, in, this is interesting too. So if somebody's out there and they, they're just starting out and they can't afford these tools, I show you in that video how to use, every, every, every tool can be replaced, of course, with a, not a superior tool, but out of your drawer in the kitchen, you usually find tools that you can use and I show you how to do that in that video if anybody's interested it's just starting out you don't have the money to you know to invest in these tools uh, but anyhow this is a this is the best webbing stretcher you have open-end webbing stretchers on the market out there that I wouldn't advise especially for beginners this is a gooseneck webbing stretcher one of our subscribers contacted us asking about what what to look for in a webbing stretcher and the only thing to, you have to look for is that it's a closed webbing stretcher or the gooseneck. It, it, it's another word for this webbing stretcher is it's closed, meaning it's not the, the other stretches that you find are open-ended with these really sharp spikes. So it being closed and you put your webbing in here, you're not going to hurt yourself as much and you get better leverage on it. It's a better tool. I definitely advise that. But in my, on those videos, you go back there, it shows you how to do it with pliers. You know, you pull each, each area and tack it pull, pull, pull four times, tack, 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 fold it over and get five tacks. You'll see it on that in that video. But this is the best tool for webbing stretching, okay? And then upholstery pins. Upholstery pins are really um, used a lot in a, you know, when we're stripping furniture and we're pulling fabric away and we're holding it tight or when we're sewing a cushion, we're, we're, we're piecing it, uh, we're, we're cutting the cushion and putting these pins in and then taking them out as we sew. Um, there's many uses for this. I use them to sew up uh, uh, throw pillows, hand stitching a throw pillow closed. I use one on each end, pull it tight, hammer it down, and then do my hand stitching. 
So that's a good a good thing to have in your in your toolbox. So upholstery pins. Okay. And then we have many different size curved needles. And so curved needles are essential if you're going to be doing hand stitching, and we have tutorials or YouTubes on that. I would go on and, and put in hand stitching and should come up in a, a, a Broadway upholstery uh, channel. But this, this is a good, uh, really good to have many different sizes. They come um, in inches, they do it by inches. So this, is, this happens to be a four inch curved needle, which is used more for sewing down horse hair and, and things like that. The bigger the needle, the more, um, the more the batting it, that, you're, that you're doing batting with big needles, small needles, you're doing hand stitching. But it's good to have all different sizes. And then we have a chisel. Um, some people like using a chisel, some people like using the claw uh, for removing staples and tacks. So um, the claws have two little prongs and the chisel's flat. I guess it depends on what you're stripping. You might be switching these tools. But here's a tip, please, never, never use these by themselves. You know, um, um, when you're using them by yourself, that, that's a sign that you, it's improper tool use, actually. Always use these tools with the mallet. Okay, because if you're using, and I mean, if, you're, if it's easy, if it's easy things to take out, fine. But if you find yourself forcing, you know, with any amount of pressure and you're going to slip, either you're going to damage the wood along a nice wood antique, or you're going to damage yourself. If you find yourself pushing, then you, you introduce back to your, your, your mallet and your chisel, okay? And now we got the regulators. So, um, some toolkits and, and if you order the toolkit that I recommend if you email me I'll, I'll give you that information they have it at, with a handle on it which is even uh, better than this this is my tool here that uh, I like I just happen to like the, 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 the one without the handle but the one with the handle for beginners may be a better idea now regulators used um, believe it or not they're not used to poke they used in the lower uh, from the point of the needle up, I would say about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch. That's the area we use the regulator a lot by you know, tucking fabric mainly, tucking pleats and things like that. Very rarely do I use it to poke a fabric. You have to be careful when you do that you have to make sure that a fiber or fabric is able to be poked. You know, you wouldn't want to be poking leather or naga hide, obviously, you're going to leave a hole. Um, and that's used, if you can use it like that, it's used to adjust fabric after a piece has been done. Okay? Very important. And a very important thing too, and finally, would be the button needle. Button needles are just what they sound. They're for putting buttons in. They're straight. They have a they have a um, an eye on one side. This eye is about an inch from the bottom. Uh, some are, have eyes on both sides, but this one just has an eye on the bottom. You thread your your your, your, your twine with the button on the end, and you put this through. And I, I have a tutorial on how to fix a button on the upholstery channel on, on Broadway upholstery and you can check that out. That's actually kind of interesting. I think we have most of the tool use covered on all our videos but uh, have fun you know scrolling through the videos just to see how these tools are used in, in practice. So um, good to see all of you and we'll see you with the next one.